I'd like to call this meeting of the Lammersville Unified Board of Education to order at six o'clock. <clears throat> and I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Lisa Boulay. Here. Colin Clements. Here. Vanitha Daniel. Absent. Stephanie Olson. Here. David Pombo. Here. Student board member Davika uh, Vithalani. Absent. Approval and or corrections to the agenda. There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. On a motion by Trustee Olson and seconded by Trustee Clements. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries with one absent. Information and discussion items. Item A, California Voting Rights Act presentation and public hearing. Staff report? Uh, yes, I have just a, a couple of details and then we're going to turn it over to our presenter tonight. I want to introduce Ryan Tung, an attorney from Lozano Smith who's helping us um, through this process. And also Carolyn Scholl, who will be uh, our presenter who works with Co Cooperative Strategies, our demographer. This is the second hearing. It is a replication of the November 1st hearing. That's intentional and part of our planning. Uh, it's gonna cover the general details of demography. Uh, soon to be posted, uh, hopefully by early next week or sooner, um, we will be providing an FAQ um, and we received some very good questions uh, today. So we're incorporating those uh, and maps. Um, I just want to remind everyone that there's a national holiday on Friday and will be closed. So if it pushes out into early next week, that, you know, that's the reality of, of, of that. But um, we hope to have those um, things posted as soon as possible. Um, we have a CVRA link on the district web website as, as it is current. Um, and uh, we are updating that it as information comes forward. The FAQ and maps will be available there. Um, the FAQ will be expanded as new questions come in um, and answers can be provided. Uh, the next hearing uh, will be uh, the first of two done in the identical twin format. So there's a November 16 and November 27th hearing those will be on the voting area scenario maps and that includes the maps um, and though the first one is that both of those the 16th and 27th start at 5 30 p.m uh, so with that general overview of the intentional planning for tonight's repeat hearing and the two subsequent hearings focused in on voting area scenarios and maps uh, on the 16th and 27th, I will turn this over and thank Carolyn Scholl from Cooperative Strategies who will pres uh, make our presentation. Good evening, thank you. Um, as it was mentioned, this will be sort of a recap of the last uh, meeting, uh, sort of reviewing <clears throat> some of the same information. So um, sort of the background of why, um, why we do this uh, is um, the California Voting Rights Act, which took effect uh, January 1st, 2003, um, prohibits the use of at-large elections uh, when it impairs the ability of a protected class to elect candidates of its choice. Uh, so basically we're looking at um, you know, rep you know, equal representation. Um, the board has taken action to adopt a resolution initiating the transition from at-large to by area elections. Uh, so here we are, November 8th. Uh, we are doing this second pre-map public hearing. Uh, again, this is sort of a recap of the first <clears throat> public hearing. Um, in, Next week, November 16th, we will be um, coming back with some map scenarios, uh, some options for drawing um, 
trustee area uh, boundary lines. And then on November 27th, uh, there would will be some discussion about those maps and um, and a, a adoption of uh, one of one of the maps uh, for use in the 2024 election. Um, and then, um, oh, sorry, um, that's on December 5th. So right. December 27th, we'll be just discussing those scenarios again. Um, and then de December 13th, uh, we will um, be at a public hearing, um, the county committee, uh, as they consider the uh, ad adopted um, uh, trustee areas map. And um, in November 2024, uh, you'll hold your first election using uh, the new voting areas. So when we draw these maps, we take into consideration these uh, criteria <clears throat> that are um, sort of, you know, guidance from the, the Citizen Voting Rights Act. Uh, so each area shall contain nearly equal numbers of habit inhabitants. So what you'll hear a lot, um, what we're talking about a lot is uh, variance. Uh, there can be no more than 10% variance between the largest uh, populated trustee area and the least populated trustee area, uh, ensuring that there's um, balance uh, of the population. Um, obviously, we're going to draw them to comply with the Federal Voting Rights Act as well. Um, they should be, the trustee areas should be compact, meaning um, sort of uh, solid shapes, think of it that way, um, and contiguous. So they should not be um, split up into like two separate areas. Um, or bisected by another trustee area. Um, <clears throat> they shouldn't be sort of sprawling or um, oddly shaped. Uh, so they're, you know, like reaching out to, you know, grab some census blocks um, in another area. So just, you know, just clean, sort of clean lines. Um, as much as possible. They should respect communities of interest as much as possible. And this is the, this is where we depend on you and your community uh, to tell us um, what those communities of interest are, that, um, you know, that it's important to the community that they're kept together. We get all of the other information to draw the maps from the census blocks. Um, and the you know the census data, um, but that is something that we can only get from you. So, um, Carolyn, an example. Yes. Can, can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, can you provide a little bit more explanation about like maybe examples of what a community of interest might be? Because um, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm I'm not sure that I'm 100 percent clear on what that. It, might be yeah to, <clears throat> absolutely it's it's one of the hardest uh one criteria to kind of get get one's head around to be honest um <clears throat> so for example uh i worked with the district in northern california where they had a very large uh, mobile home park um and running right through the middle of it was a main thoroughfare so as a demographer, I would look at that and think, oh, that's a good boundary for a trustee area, right? <clears throat> but it was very important to this community that that mobile home park be kept together in one trustee area. So that that's kind of an example. Okay. Um, a very, you know, specific to the community. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sure. <clears throat> Um, so we also try to follow, um, as I mentioned uh, just, just now, man-made and natural geographic figure, uh, features. Um, so river, rivers or waterways, um, <clears throat> um, major highways, major thoroughfares, um, major streets, 
Carolyn, I actually had a question about this one as well, if I may, okay. um, because I was, I, you know, in the case of your uh, mobile home park example, um, I didn't really understand like why those berries would be um, like why that was a significant issue. And I, I think I figured it out. And it's the opposite of the mobile home park. Um, if you have right. two people of a perfect protected class that lived 400 feet from each other, but that 400 feet is, you know, eight lanes of I-5 in the middle of LA, they're not really part of the same community, right? Because they would need to go two miles north to the underpass and then under the, and then two miles. So is that the kind of the essence of the reason for following those natural and man-made uh, features is to keep the communities, significant communities together? So it's, it's, I believe it's more, um, to kind of think of it more as, as opposed to using major streets and highways as opposed to cutting across, um, say, you know, using parcel lines as a boundary. So it's, it's more <clears throat> rather than it's sort of, you know, trying to follow man-made and natural geographic features rather than sort of um, arbitrary, you know, drawing lines arbitrarily okay. through, um, through parcels or, you know, alleyways or um, across, I don't know, fields and things. So, <clears throat> I, I, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sorry, Carolyn, if you don't mind. Uh, good evening, board. Thank you for having me here, Superintendent. Um, just to add to that, um, the way that helps me sort of conceptualize that question, I think it's a good question to add on to what Carolyn said, is as part of this process, we are looking to essentially dissect the district into five different areas. And so communities of interest and man-made natural boundaries are ways for us to sort of conceptualize how those could look. So I like the example that you gave about if this person is somewhat close, but there's a huge freeway, that may be something that we can look at in dividing those. Okay. Respect to your question of communities of interest, it is a complex question and it, rate, it kind of lends to a lot of different interpretations. So I've seen some communities that said, you know, this is where we have this particular elementary school. And so we feel like that's sort of a community of interest. I've seen our kids play at the same park. So it may not be exactly what you would think looking at it geographically, but how the kids play or where we go shopping or things like that. So it's kind of a broader interpretation when it comes to communities of interest. Thank you very much, both of you. I appreciate it because I, as I was thinking through this, you know, like trying to get my arms, my mind around it, I wasn't clear on those two. So thank you very much. And thank you, thank you, Ryan, for <clears throat> further clarifying. That was helpful. Thank you. Um, so we we also try to respect incumbency where where it's possible, um, where we can if we can do that without um, violating any of the other um, criteria here, um, we will try to uh, respect incumbency as well. And again, other local considerations um, and <clears throat> that we, we really depend a lot on you and community input um, to inform the way that we, um, we draw these maps. So this is a um, sort of a profile of your, your, di your district's population. Uh, we have a total population of 25,869 <clears throat> people. Um, uh, that the census reported. Um, the the other number that you see there, that it's 17,081, is the population over 18. Um, and then this is just sort of a map of kind of how the cities um, are <clears throat> laid out uh, in your your district. One of the things that we look at when we we draw these maps is the demographics 
and looking at uh, protected groups. So your largest uh, protected group is um, your Asian population, which makes up 29.7% of your citizen voting age population. And this is a rolling five-year um, estimated average. <clears throat> um, and then, um, so this is this map shows the census blocks are what you're looking at here, and the percentage of citizen voting age population, the percentage of the total citizen voting age population that is um, Asian. So you can see this uh, the very dark um, darkest area uh, is uh, this area here. Um, where there's a lot of um, a lot of Asian uh, people living, so we would look at trying to keep that area uh, together as much as possible, um, and you'll see that um, when we we look at maps um, next time. Uh, your second highest is the Hispanic citizen voting age population, and this is a map. <clears throat> graduated color map showing the percentage of Hispanic citizen voting age population for each of your census blocks. And again, the darker colors, uh, the higher the percentage. So another thing that we look at, uh, as we mentioned on the previous slide, was um, <clears throat> sort of major roadways and um, uh, main thoroughfares and natural um, natural features. Uh, so we looked at, <clears throat> we asked, we need feedback from you, the community, to let us know what neighborhoods you want to keep together, what communities of interest uh, you want to keep together in the same voting area, what, what's important uh, to, to the district and the community. And um, looking back on the, the map that I just showed, um, some of the examples of feedback that we get are looking at major streets like the International Parkway, Grant Line Road, or Mountain House Creek would be good boundaries, <clears throat> um, they make sense um, because they might com keep communities together, um, they might provide, um, and they might provide good representation. So um, I'm take any questions that you might have. Well, I jumped, I jumped the gun and asked my questions as we were going through the <laughs> slides. Okay. Um, I think I understood most of everything else in the deck. I, I actually have a question that I didn't think of um, last week. Regarding the um, the two slides that's, that have the voting age populations, those are just citizens over 18 years of, or 18 and over, not necessarily registered voters. Am I correct? So <clears throat> let me um, see. I don't know if I can go back. Let me see if I can go back. Um, <laughs> So this uh, this slide, this table, is the over 18 population, which is 17,081. On the uh, demographic slides, these slides, um, it's a, we're talking about a different population. We're talking about citizen voting age population, and these would be this would be the estimated number of voters. In, in your in the in those groups, would that estimate by 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 saying that's an estimate number? Do you mean registered voters or potential registered voters? Uh, I believe it's registered voters. Okay. But Ryan, maybe you can weigh in on that. If it's registered voters, wouldn't there be an exact number rather than an estimate? I, I, so over five years, though. So I I we're going to double check that for you. Okay. Um, we'll look into that for you. I, I, I don't want to get over my skis on that. So we'll find that answer for you. Thank you. And this is 
<clears throat> this is a, a five year rolling estimate. Um, so yeah, the numbers are, are an estimate. They're not um, e exact, but I, I believe they are the, the number of people that could be expected to vote. Further questions or comments by the board? I have a couple of, of comments, if I may, Mr. President. Um, and since this is agendized, I can talk about you know, my thoughts, correct? Um, at, I think at first, when, I, when we were first going through the mental thought process, individually as board members, because obviously we can't talk about it. Um, so when I was going through this, initially, uh, one of my hopes, aspirations, if you will, was that we didn't end up with a situation where, you know, one board member represents two elementary schools and another board member represents another elementary school and another board member represents, you know, and, and, and to, to kind of avoid the 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 impetus if you will because once we're on the dais we're responsible for the entire district regardless of what area we're from but i look at the voting demographics and it it feels to me like that's going to be an overriding concern right that that the chips kind of fall where they may as to where the elementary schools are and if we end up with that situation it's kind of required under the CVRA. That's kind of how I'm, how I'm feeling now after seeing, because this is the first time, by the way, in case the public doesn't know, this is the first time we've seen the demographics and we haven't seen the maps that the demographers have come up with, you know, to, 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 to recommend yet. Um, and so I, I'm kind of feeling like, well, that goal, and I think it's a laudable goal if you can achieve it, I think it would, optimize the results for the district but I don't see how you you know like you can you know like I think you have to let the chips fall where they may in terms of the demographics and so if Carolyn has uh, something you know like a something some words of wisdom on that particular topic I would love to hear them um, I'm not muted right <laughs> No, Here you're there. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, so our our first um, consideration, of course, is is those um, protected groups, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, but we do take into consideration um, the desire by the community and and you, you as the board and the district, if uh, to <clears throat> to consider the location of elementary schools or or high school uh, boundaries, um, and <clears throat> try, and we can try to the extent possible to respect those boundaries, um, school bound, attendance boundaries, or city boundaries, or you know whatever is in, whatever boundaries are are important uh, to the district. We can try to respect those as well um, to the extent possible, while still complying with. Um, the CVRA. And Carolyn, if, if I may add, um, hearing your particular concern or the example that you gave, Trustee, some things that I have seen other districts consider when they're worried about that sort of balkanization type of, I represent <clears throat> this, you represent this, specific to attendance zones, sometimes depending on how your attendance zones are for your particular schools, it may be possible to say, we're going to make sure that there's no one person representing just one attendance zone. So maybe every board member has, you know, multiple attendance zones, and also every school may have multiple board members who cross over that. I'm not sure that's possible here. We'll have to ask the demographer when they look at it. But those are some considerations that I've, I have heard been used and somewhat successfully to try to address that particular issue. Could you explain um, what you mean by attendance? Zone? Th thank you. I was just going to ask that as well. Yeah. So. You know, we're through this process, the demographers are going to be drawing trustee areas. Those are separate from your school attendance zones. So where I live, 
would dictate where I'm sending my kid to elementary school. Those are two sort of different processes. But one way to address a particular concern of I'm only representing this school is to actually look at those attendance areas, not to change them, but to inform potentially how we're going to draw our trustee areas. Does that help answer? It, it absolutely does. Uh, thank you very much. Further questions or comments by the board? I had one more. <laughs> I'm having an early Alzheimer's moment. Nah, not so early. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please pull the knife out? Because it hurts. Um, okay, one of them was... I, I'm sorry, Mr. President, I've lost the other one. But that was the, the one on having one representative, one board member represent like one school and getting into that conundrum. Um, obviously the first goal would, it has to be, you know, the protection of the protected class and, and that, but to the extent we can not tempt people with that particular situation. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, now that the presentation is concluded, um, we will allow public comment. The board, the entire board appreciates hearing from members of the community and public at large. The board shall give members of the public an opportunity to address the board either before or during the board's consideration of each agenda item. At a time so designated, <clears throat> Members may comment on the agenda items. This is a special meeting, so only ag agenda items will be heard to tonight. Um, the board may refer such a matter to the superintendent or designee or take it under advisement, but shall not take action at that time. Um, the board shall limit time per speaker to three minutes to address the board and the board shall limit total time to 20 minutes. I would request that um, we limit the public comment to actual comments and not questions. Um, Mr. Tung has agreed to stay after the meeting and, and answer specific questions as he can. Would anyone like to make a public comment at this time? Please state your name for the record. Yes, uh, I am Arjun, Arjun Jutur. Um I have a few questions to the board. Um, most of the boards disclosed that they received a lawsuit to move from at large to by trustee. Um, I haven't heard anything from LUSD <clears throat> regarding this, whether we have got a lawsuit or anything, and then suddenly why we're moving from at large to by trustee. Uh, based on the, the the deadlines which we are seeing, which is very aggressive, I'm assuming that we got a lawsuit. Uh, but I don't know because I checked your uh, special meeting on October 26th or something. It is not mentioned. Or even before that uh, board meeting, it was not mentioned that LUSD received any lawsuit. If it is not received a lawsuit, then the, our deadlines are very aggressive and we can go it differently, right? If we have received it, but we didn't disclose it, right? So then that is another question because um, not transparent by not disclosing it, if you got and if you didn't uh, inform us. And <laughs> the other one is uh, when we become a, do a by trustee, is it going to go through a ballot or state board of education will give a waiver not to go through the ballot? because there is a chance that the state board can push us into a ballot for the at-large at to uh, by trusting. And these are the main questions, and also regarding some of this uh, data which we shared, I think there's some skewed data there. So I see there are 13,000 Asian population and the voting is only 3,000 and odd, right? So it's a very huge gap. So almost like 10,000 is not voting, right? So. I think how we are going, I think by doing at large to by trustee, I don't think we can address that the huge gap. 
So what I saw is in SFO, Board of School District, San Francisco School Board District, allowed non-citizens to vote um, through a measure, but I don't know that it's part of this or not, but maybe in the future we can consider that in case if we don't have, because a lot of population here, Asian population is on H1s and they can't vote and they are only, they pay taxes, but they don't vote. So, but San Francisco School Board allowed non-citizens, legal non-citizens can vote uh, and they are doing it. So I just want to bring it up. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any further public comment at this time? This is uh, Suresh Vayiru, uh, I live in College Park. Um, I, I mean, looks like this today's meeting just reiterating what we have presented in last meeting. Uh, I expected that like we are coming up with a drafted uh, map. So basically the division you know we know the target of the division right so basically we have to out of the 25,000 altogether let's say the population so basically primarily the population we have to distribute to the five districts plus the citizens based on the protected class so we know that so I expected some kind of draft map because we have uh, two more meetings right so uh, so, but I, it, it is reiterating the what we have shown last time. That's fine. But uh, at the same time, um, yeah, based on demographic things in our mountain house community, yeah, definitely the maps. Uh, it's very hard for us to go with a contiguous uh, thing. Um, but still, yeah, we will try our best. But uh, at the same time, are, when are we going to give the drafted maps? boundaries basically and uh, you know out of that each boundary we know that so we have to distribute the person I mean if we can as much as possible uh, we have to distribute the protected classes percentage in each boundaries is that right that's what I'm thinking so those are the primary uh, concerns we should have rather than going for the community basis you know natural or you know uh, natural boundaries or man-made things and all is very, I mean, lowest concern for us. So that's what I can think. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are not able to answer questions. The, the lawyer will stay and answer questions as he can. Also, um, earlier in the meeting, many of the questions that both of our speakers asked were answered. So if they want to look at the meeting once it's posted, you'll get answers to many of your questions. Superintendent, is there anything further you'd like to add at this time? I could repeat a couple of things as a review. Okay, so we have uh, Ryan Tung, attorney from Lozano Smith, and Carolyn Schulp did the presentations from um, Cooperative Strategies. She's a demographer. Intentionally in our planning, there were two hearings that focused on explaining the demography process, November 1st and tonight, November 8th. There is a new two uh, scheduled hearings that are going to focus on the maps, November 16th and November 27th. Both start at 530. The focus of those are voting area scenarios and maps. Uh, in the next couple of days, the national holiday being a potential uh, conflict or complication, maps and an FAQ will be posted on the CVRRA section of the website. We have already created a link. Um, the FAQs, we have received questions today. We're going to tweak it to add, add the, that information. And as questions come in, we will continue to tweak it and add information. Uh, maps will be posted, um, like I said, uh, in, the, in the next few days. And that sets up the hearing, um, the two hearing process, again, intentionally, to, de to have two hearings on the same topic so that if people can't make one night, they can go to the next night. And so that's the intentional planning on this. Uh, that reviews what we have. We would like to thank um, Carolyn Scholl for her presentation on demography. Um, and we want to thank Ryan Tung for his uh, support and cooperation um, in this process. And with that, that is my review, sir. May I say thank you to Carolyn and Ryan for the information.
Anything further from the board? Looking for a motion. Um, once again, thank you to Ryan and Carolyn for the presentation tonight. Move to adjourn. Second. On a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Boulay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Absent, we are now adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.